Want more positivity in your life? Subscribe, turn on notifications, follow us, and you know, all that techie stuff. We'd love to hear from you. Comment, share, or give us a thumbs up. We are grateful to have you hanging out with us at Matt Logan Speaks. You know, we talked before we started about what, you know, being afraid of what's going on, various things yeah. and elections and all of that stuff. Um, really, I think, and, and people can take it all kinds of different ways, but I think really at the core of it is we've lost personal responsibility. Yeah. And, and not entirely, because there's a lot of people and facets of our community that teach it. But that is the, the aspect of our society today that I find myself thinking about when I watch the news, when I have to re, you know, talk to reporters, and you know, the focus gets put on this or that or whatever it is that you know, fits the story for the day. Um, I, it, that's part of what comes out is the personal responsibility that somebody made a choice. Yeah. And that's, again, you know, we, I still firmly and we truly, we still teach the D.A.R.E. program because that's, that's at the very core of it is personal responsibility. You make a choice to say yes or no, whether it's peer pressure, whether it's, you know, um, you know, just happens to be a good thought at the time or it feels good. Yeah. You know, whatever it is, whether it's drugs, whether it's stealing something, whether it's bullying somebody, and, you know, you talk about that with all the kids, it, it flows right into adulthood. We all make that choice mm -hmm. at some point in time, and we have to do more about thinking about it and retraining ourselves, you know, the, the phone can wait, the, the saying those words to that person or sending that text or responding on the... The, the social media story that mm -hmm. way, whether it's Twitter, Snapchat, or Facebook, whatever, I don't care what it is, people are so quick to jump into there because, whoa, I got to say this. Yeah. And, it's and, like, whoa, we're yeah, and you can, back you the can, bus up here. you can relate that to that, that one or two more beers, you know, at the bar, and yeah. you can do all, I mean, that goes everywhere. The, the whole, the, the and, hold my beer. Look at yeah, this. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, totally. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's like, so that, so my shirt says I am shiny. Yeah. And, I like um, that what too, that, what, cool. thanks, thanks. Um, so it's an acronym that I came up with in 2014, and I'm really, I'm I'm laying out. In fact, I may even end up writing a whole book on it. But yeah. I'm laying it out as a complete teaching. Um, I, I did it as as like a, about an hour and a half teaching back then, and it's so it stands for strong, hope, influential, necessary. You. Mm -hmm. So I am strong. I am hope. I am influential. Mm -hmm. I am necessary, and I am you. Mm -hmm. And so that. Everything that I do, that last part is 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 really strong for me. The I am you, and that is is that I I hurt like you do. Mm -hmm. I work hard like you do. Yeah. You know, and so anything that I do affects you in society. Right. So we're the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are more educated and clearly more good looking and better <laughs> oh, hair. Stop now. But continue with your no. story. This is but a good so, story. Don't mess but it up. So <laughs> what so so the, the the big thing is that you have to understand that you part. So as part of the training it's it's uh to be shiny. So to be mm -hmm. strong, to be oh, yeah. hope, to to be influential, to be necessary and to be you. And in order to be you, you have to understand who you are and what you're responsible for and your that's your choices yeah. and actions. That's the core of it. Right? And mm -hmm. And so, but I'm really, I'm tired of this safetyism BS, frankly. Mm -hmm. And this, we live in a really safe society and it's yeah. great. Vehicles are safer, car seats are oh. safer, hospitals are safer, and I can go on and on, yeah. right? And, and that's terrific. But we And we stop. should continue to strive for absolutely. that. Absolutely. No absolutely. Yeah. But to have this, oh, be safe, oh, go be, oh, be safe, Yeah. dang it. Go be strong. Yeah. You know, go do things to make yourself stronger. Yeah. Go do things to, to make your neighbor stronger, you know, yeah. things like that to me. And and that's where we'll understand and appreciate that personal responsibility and the reward that comes with that. 
Mm -hmm. The reward of personal responsibility is enormous. We're going to be less depressed if we have personal responsibility. Because you're not going to have things to be worried about because you knew you did the right thing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so I'm on that kick right now, and so there's going to be more of that coming out. That's a good one. That's a good path to follow. I'm just like, ugh. I was just thinking while you're talking about that and talking about the acronym that Shiny yeah. is. And I'm going, I've got some shirts for you, by love, the way. Love. I forgot to give Scott his. Oh. Scott, if you're watching or listening, <laughs> I have some shirts for you. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say what's in my head. <laughs> no, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell Scott later. Um, but as I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking about how wonderful it was that you came up with those thoughts, whether – you believe in God, or you know, however you see that, it came to you at some point in time, yeah. and now that those thoughts, hopefully, are going to change some lives and save some lives, as we you yeah. know, use the yeah, word yeah. save, right? Um, or be safe, but that, that's really cool. That's really Thank powerful. You. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, I I don't know. I I'm gonna push it. Yeah. Whether it's gonna work or not, well, I don't know. You know but I, I hopefully I'm actually I have been writing it into my my new um presentation and stuff because mm-hmm. I one thing that I, I lightly touch on is kind of a, a mental uh, resilience, maybe you would call it mm-hmm. throughout uh, my presentations because clearly to do what I do, that mental resilience is extremely important and um you have to understand yourself very yeah. pretty well and be very self-aware to do those things and mm-hmm. go through that that pain and i'm going to incorporate that shiny specifically into that yeah in things too so that's um that's come to cool. texas when i go down there and, yeah and speak in the spring so yeah <laughs> no that's that's really neat it's it's unique and the other thing i'm thinking about with this you know it may not take off right away it may not be immediate and who knows it may be five years and all of a sudden boom it hits and you're like well where were you five years ago but again circumstances timing yeah and you know what that's uh, and people um i've had a lot of conversations this year and and uh, so spring is a huge time of the year for me to speak at schools because Mm -hmm. uh, distracted driving awareness month is april and things like that um and i had like 37 gigs at the time oh, and got gigs is right yeah before you got moving. I, right yeah like literally God. that next week i had oh, a tough. bunch so it's been it's been an interesting thing so it's it's given me some time to think about it and what that is is you see a lot of these people that um right now are putting things out there and trying to be controversial and and trying to get the the likes and yeah. um be these influencers controversy sells controversy. yeah exactly yeah, right get it. and i totally and, get it yeah and so but look man i've spoke to about three hundred seventy thousand students now yeah. i that's keep impressive. doing it i keep yeah. doing it and that's what it takes right yeah. it takes you have to keep doing it and in order to keep doing it you know what that means is you have to have that shiny core you Mm -hmm. have to have those thoughts in place Mm -hmm. you have to understand that this isn't a moment 15 minutes of TikTok fame yeah Yeah, exactly and all that kind of stuff yeah no this is a long haul people no i i totally agree that's why i respect what you guys do and and stuff thank you all the different things in the background that is constantly working and Mm -hmm trying to keep people safe but also build them strong yeah you know yeah so, that's and, it i mean we we uh, one of our new hire deputies today was talking about one of those situations in his life with a family member mm. and how it would have been so easy in those moments to just give up and walk away yeah. and just be done with it and he didn't and he stuck with it and there was another one that was talking today about how he was with the big brother big sister program big brothers because he was a guy yeah, right yeah um so he has a little he talked about a little i thought that was so cute how he said my little yeah but he gave up the program because he his little had two other littles mm. and his two other littles were in the same home same scenario same problems i think single mom you know difficult everything in life and he was only allowed by the program to help the one i'm not bashing big brother big sister yeah, this is not, yeah that's yeah. an awesome program it is and i'm like absolutely. where do i sign up and then i go yeah. wait a minute i don't have time y- for that you're stuff. already signed up for all these other <laughs> things over here and i wish yeah. i i could and uh, you know i'm thinking yeah. well if we hire this guy i think what i'd like to see us do is see if he could 
get our office and some of our other people to maybe start doing that mm. mentorships and there's all kinds of mentorship things yeah. that are out there and but he quit the program specifically because he saw the need for the two other little brothers mm -hmm. and so we quit that now he's he's the, he's the big mentoring for three yeah, little love it and you know he just saw an opportunity and he's he's sticking with it and this is he was a college kid at the time and now he's you know i'm pretty sure we're going to hire the guy and and uh, i just can't wait for him yeah, to get with us because it is you know and, and that's that's the part that you know we may not be able to fix everything but fix that world around you fix what you can control and i i see it it, I, I see a lot of that not a lot i see a, quite a bit of the behind the scenes and you guys helping students especially because that's kind of what i'm in yeah in the arena i guess the right. last few years do you ever get really disheartened um or what do you do i i i should say i'm sure you do get disheartened when you see some of the things that yeah. you know media is bashing police officers and mind you there's bad police officers oh there's yeah. bad doctors there's you know all bad kinds teachers, of bad yeah, farmers yeah, yeah, all of it it's you know right bad whatever i mean there's always that but it's such a small percentage in your line right. of work i mean it truly is and um when you get disheartened does that do you dig in more do you say you i'm ready more to determine yeah like do you dig in and say you know we let's just show them what we do yeah. like like i love that you and scott have been here now on the podcast yeah. i hope matt i'm, I'm, I'm gonna reach I'm out to you. matt oh you should yeah absolutely and troy uh, uh christensen oh, and you know yeah. and um scott mcconkey was here oh well that's another and, awesome yeah guy. isn't he yeah he's, you're gonna have to so you're gonna have to listen or watch that one because he's he's great but um so i so i i've over the eight years i've hundreds of law enforcement i've i've had the privilege of watching and in mm -hmm. working with um you guys and gals are in it for people period yeah. mm-hmm Clearly, it's not the money. No, God, no. <laughs> and, you know, I've heard what some of them make, and it's not the money. And um, you get beat up sometimes physically even, but yeah. certainly you get beat up in the media and the public. Yeah. What do you yeah. – tell people, like, what do you do to – for Combat me, and, and I'm personally. not going to say I'm everybody because uh, no, you know, right. I do things well, my you way. Personally. So for me, I, I, I can't say that I would, I've never been discouraged or, yeah. or thought about giving up because you can't be human and not. Yeah. But I get through those thoughts and then it just, it's determination. It comes down to, no, I know I'm doing the right thing. And and this is one thing I I used to be able to have it in my office when my offices as I move through our our process of growing as a person in our office captains and sergeants and and I went to a class years ago a leadership class and I still have the cup to this day and and it says on the cup it has a thumbs up and is and then on the other side is catch a cop doing something right. And so that that made, that's always made a huge impact. And that cup sits right on my desk today. And at times I'll turn it around and make sure it's visible when the media is there and others. And I don't yeah. know if they notice or not. <laughs> right. But yeah, I'm just kind of waiting. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So that's the one part of it. But the take the other takeaway from that class that's still extremely vivid. And when I was in these other offices, they were usually had metal cabinets and stuff. Mm -hmm. And now I've got wood, so I can't. Oh yeah, the, so right. I yeah. I can't have this one poster that i've had up in my office every office now i'm in this office where sure. i have the media coming in a lot yeah and i can't put my sign up but it's simply do the right thing for the right the right times for the right reasons yeah and that's that's it and so i you get that discouraged determination and then i i i i, I cycle that through all the time if i'm doing the right thing really the right thing not only just for me but for whoever at the right time, meaning if it wasn't a situation and I wasn't dealing with it now, it must be the right time. Mm -hmm. So let's get at it now. Let's, a, let's attack. Let's do what we have to do with this problem. And then those right reasons. And if, if it's all there and they all, all the answers say yes, like a flow chart, it's yes, yes, yes. Yep. Go for it. Do it. And yeah. don't give up. And that's been 
that's really been at the core of, of me and and it was that way before I even went to the class was um, you know it just wasn't verbalized it just wasn't something verbalized sure. so when it hit me that class I was like oh, wow yeah you know, that was a V8 moment yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was like Ta-dong! right <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know so that's that's it I mean there's a lot of other things that go into it you know faith you know beliefs and my family, my parents, my my growing up, being a farm kid, you know, all those things, working hard, all that stuff, all plays into it. But ultimately, it comes down to those kind of things where, yeah, we, I know I'm doing the right thing. I know every one of our deputies is is at the core of what they do is doing the right thing. Can they make a mistake? Will they make a mistake? Yes. Can we move on from that mistake? Do we own up to those mistakes? Yeah. That's the other big yeah, part that of it. Personal responsibility, huge. Which we've you know yep, we've talked yep, about that. Yep. And and if we did make a mistake, we are going to make up to it. We're going to own up. We can't go back if something got you know something's at a point you can't go back and rewind it and do it again. Yeah. But we're going to do everything we can, whether it's policies, whether it's training. We're going to do everything we can to to not let it happen again. And if it does, we're going to back it up again and try to fix whatever happens. So, um, you know, those things are this this last summer, you know, go back to Ferguson. Mm-hmm. You go back to Rodney King. That's when I was on yeah. patrol and working yeah, I, on the streets. I and, remember all that. And, you know, I've, I've been through each one of those events. And it's like, you know what? We've got to keep doing what we're doing because we know that our societies, our communities – they depend on us to be there uh, for whatever it is, and you know the the whole defund piece that started to fly around and kind of became the it phrase mm-hmm. earlier this summer, um, and even still, still around still pretty around. heavily. It's still yeah. around, and it'll it'll cycle again when it gets to legislative time, and mm-hmm. you know, in, in late winter uh, when they get back to the session, certainly in St. Paul, and um, you know. We just have to keep driving it home to whoever we can talk to, whoever will listen, and explain to them what we're doing. Yeah, you know, most of the things that came out of. So I don't. I don't. I'll back up a second. Um, uh, let's see. When was it? Now that was nineteen. So most of last summer, and then into the winter, um, I was asked as part of the Minnesota Sheriffs Association to sit on a working group panel for deadly force encounters for law enforcement mm. with uh, Attorney General Ellison, mm-hmm. with uh, Commissioner of Public Safety Harrington, and a whole bunch of other folks, yeah. representing judges, representing county attorneys, representing um, influential groups with minority organizations. Um, uh, uh, you know, just, it was, a, it was a very well thought out and put together group of people representing very important parts of society, mental health-based mm. people, um, uh, foundations that support minority organizations, all of that. And, uh, you know, as we were going through and they would raise the red flag, well, law enforcement needs this. And I'm like, yeah, well, the county's already doing that. We've been doing that. Every law enforcement officer needs a body camera. Yep, got it. Yeah. Check. Uh, every law enforcement agency should have uh, mental health support for their their de- their officers. Yep, check doing that, and to some degree, because I was out state, and this is a Minnesota thing, and it's probably the same in other states. But if you're outside the metro, yeah, you're you, you, you're not you, metro. You're really not. You don't always qualify. Sure, I don't know how to describe it, but it's just kind of a weird dynamic and so when i was there representing sheriffs all 87 sheriffs in the state and saying yeah we're already doing those things yeah we do that could we do more of it could we do better oh yeah never saying no absolutely let's bring it on let's do it let's do it right because that's what we're here for Mm -hmm. um and i think it kind of was in fact one of them uh it was a gal i forget which organization she was it doesn't matter but she was a black uh, a female, um, and she came to me after, and me and the the officer, the chief that was representing the Minnesota police chiefs, and we were talking after uh, one of the sessions, um, and it was a deliberation. So we had we had four listening sessions around the state: Mankato, 
Fond du Lac, uh, up by Duluth, uh, and then two in the Metro. Mm. And after one of them, then after each one, we would have deliberation uh, days where we would spend the entire day in a room uh, together uh, just debating what we heard at the last one and, and how, okay, we had to turn these things into recommendations. And we came up with 51 different recommendations for Minnesota law enforcement to start working on and then recommendations towards the state legislature to assist in that by maybe tweaking laws and guiding the Minnesota Post Board, which is Police Officer Standards and Trainings Board, mm. which guides our training from the time that someone goes enters community college at RCTC to begin their law enforcement training to the skills program, which is the required course that everybody, every law enforcement has to take before they can even take the test to become a law enforcement officer in the state. Then they have to pass the test. Then they have to apply and most likely take, <coughs> excuse me, take more tests for that agency, which is where I was the last two days with uh, 11 young kids, <laughs> <laughs> literally. Um, <laughs> as we were deciding which of those six of those 11 are going to become deputies for Olmstead County. Yeah. Um, I'm telling you, it's an impressive group of people. I'm nice. just so amazed at, at who these kids are that are coming to us. I got to say that I'm excited that people are actually still getting <laughs> yes, into it right now. Absolutely. Like, I, yes. This was, this was our biggest application pool that we've ever no had. No way. When, uh, not ever. That's fantastic. When I was there, when I first tested and uh, took the initial test for Olmsted County back in 1970, not 79, 1985, mm. um, there was 500 people in the room. Oh, wow. But of the more recent times, over the last 10 years, mm -hmm. we had 42 people that took yeah. our that submitted applications, and I think it was 36 that actually showed up for the initial phases of it. Mm -hmm. um, but that was the biggest numbers we've had in at least 10 years. Wow. And so this piece that we were all afraid of and and trust me there's other agencies that are struggling with that where yeah, they might get yeah. one or two applications and that's right. difficult that's... um but we didn't and i don't know what that is there's, and it was kind of neat hearing these kids today talk about <laughs> <laughs> um, they're all adults but, but right no right God, yeah there's it's... one of them there i mean he could have been 15 <laughs> i swear <laughs> are you even shaving yet kiddo right but anyway he's gonna be a cop it's pretty impressive yeah um but and i'm losing track of where i was at but anyway with the working group she came over afterwards and said i learned so much from you today and Quite honestly, her organization has been a, a very anti-law enforcement organization. Mm -hmm. And she came over, and, and that's the part of it is, again, we talk about narratives for our society. Yeah, We don't listen to each other. We no. don't take the time to learn about yeah. who we are and what we do. Mm -hmm. And you know to just label someone this or that or accuse an organization or an entire profession. Yeah because of one officer or one individual's actions that is messed up it is and if we do that to a race or to a city or you know i, I remember dealing with that when uh, when i was a school liaison deputy one of our schools had a bad incident that happened and they were coming to me going you can't be sure the media doesn't find out about this and like <laughs> it's public information. Yeah, sorry, right. you're gonna lose that argument. Yeah. Well, we can't let them out because then you know we don't want people to know that our school is a bad school. Right. I'm like, no, you got one kid that messed up and made a bad decision and affected everybody. Yes. Yeah. But that shouldn't, you know, put a cloud over a blanket over your school. That doesn't mean that all these kids are the same way yeah don't don't let it it gets back to that personal responsibility right make that again. person be responsible again it's so and then simple. you don't have that <laughs> yes so you know it, it was so interesting that day when she came over and and, and said mm -hmm. that she was very sincere she was very engaging we had some disagreements there's no question yeah we had lots but of that's things okay to talk about. but we talked about it in yeah. a civil fashion right and then fast forward to where the legislative session happened and some of the legislators that had control didn't even pay attention to the recommendations that we had worked really hard on for seven, almost eight months. And they just 
disregarded it. And I was up there and testified in front of them like, you got to pay attention to what we did. We already talked about this. What you have in your bill is nowhere near what mm -hmm. we recommend you do. Don't do that. And it didn't go anywhere because it was a bad bill. So listen to what we told you. Yeah. So we worked hard on it. It was great. Is some of that like virtue signaling and stuff? I mean, are they trying to make things look good and well, like it's their idea? Yeah, we're trying. Yeah, this is mine. Some of those. I, yeah, yeah. Oh, is that some of that? So yeah. much of that, and you know, the legislature uh, and you know the electors and a lot of people out there. Um, I went There's up. so much that goes on up there behind the scenes, and yeah, it, it's a difficult place. But then again. You know, there's a lot of compromise, and in compromise, nobody wins. Right. Generally, right. That's that's the, that's, the terminology, that's, and, yeah. and when we talk about contracts and unions and things, you know, if if, if we're both unhappy, it's it's the best agreement we could come to. Yeah. Is kind of what they say. And, yeah. And I I don't like it because right. I feel my ideas are better. Yeah. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, you got to admit it. Um. So, uh, you know, as it as is all of this stuff evolved this summer and we had protests down here in Rochester and you know I've credited in me in the media with uh, and said it many times in our own Facebook and my personal stuff as well as my Sheriff Kevin pages and said you know I I'm very happy with the people that came here and protested <coughs> or did the rallies because they did it right yeah the only thing you were missing is on a few of those occasions they wanted us to come and be in front of them and yet they're handing up holding up signs you know ACAB all cops are bastards yeah. you know these derogatory and 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 throwing the blanket over a whole profession yeah. comments and, yeah. and and phrases that I'm not going to accept that because right. it's not true it's not and true. I'm not going to go there and put myself in front of you um, and 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 have to deal with that because th that's wrong. Yeah. But I'll sit down with you at across the table and let's talk. Yeah. Let's get you and I've offered that and it hasn't happened, and that's what is the most frustrating piece right now, because I I had such a great opportunity with, and I don't see eye to eye with uh, Attorney General Ellison. There's yeah. a lot of things we disagree about, and we yeah. had some good tar arguments and I wouldn't yeah. say arguments but debates. Yeah. Respectful. Um, with and with others in that in that those meetings, but we heard each other, we listened to each mm -hmm. other. And there's things that I accepted from what the attorney general said and what others in that room said, because I could accept it. But we wouldn't have got there if we hadn't talked about it. Yeah, and that's what's the other frustrating piece right now. And again, it's not discouraging in the sense that I will ever give up because I'll never give up. Yeah. In that sense, but I'm I've become more determined to hold that ground in that sense of let's talk and let's talk in a manner you don't have to wave a sign at me. I don't need that. Yeah. I'm not going to yell at you. You don't yell at me. You don't yeah. put your finger in my face, and I'm not going to do that to you. Yeah. But let's talk about it. Yeah. That's all I'm asking. And, and it and that is interesting. If you can't there. if you can't sit down and talk about something with an like a organization or a person yeah they just want to be mad yeah they just want to be destructive right that's all they want right if you can't sit down and here's what we're looking for here's yeah. what we need here's your perspective my perspective yeah. all that kind of stuff then all they want to do is be mad right go let them be mad in some yep field somewhere and, and, and other, go away from yeah. everybody else and be mad yeah but if you're going to break the law, you're going to go to yeah, jail. Yeah, don't gonna, don't, don't you, get upset at me. No, if you break the law, and I have to go do you know take take care of that because yeah. it's the it, law. And I want to be clear: protests. I fully agree with protests. Oh, that's free speech, absolutely, and we support that. And but not angry, no. violent, rioting, looting. Yeah. Right. That's no. And I get it. We, you know, I've had people tell me, and you know, whether it's Facebook or others, you know, and in person, emails, whatever, that, well, if we just do those things, we still don't get the attention that we need or we feel this cause needs the attention of. And I'm going, okay, no, I, I, that's where I disagree is have a rally, it gets the attention, mm -hmm. do it the right way draw attention to it but let's get behind the scenes and in the dirt and fix it yep 
together. And I would circle back for me personally, I wouldn't have spoke to 370,000 students in a year's time or six yeah. months time. You have to dig in and you have to go. Oh, yeah. And you have to keep going. And it's hard work. And you have to keep going and yeah. you have to keep going. Right. Yeah, you can't just this yeah. throw this fit for five minutes and think that it's going to change right. anything. What's that going to solve? No. Other than, you know, maybe get your TikTok video <laughs> or your Snapchat or, right. or whatever. And, you know, okay, fine, you got 3,000 likes. Yeah. But did it change anybody's course of action or their, and again, thinking ideologies you know yeah. there's just so much of that that goes into this and and that's the the the, the factor there that we just need to talk we yep. need to sit down and talk and until pe- we when we don't do that we're never going to see things get much better no because and they need to figure out what their i i ideal circumstances are i can't spit that word out for some reason their mm-hmm. ideal circumstances are in ideologies because they don't even know mm-hmm. most of the time yeah. right oh, they, they, yeah, they don't, yeah, they're just they, like i said they're just angry yeah and they don't even know why they're angry yeah. a lot of them i've talked to people like well yeah. tell me spell it out give me five things yeah. right give me five things that you stand for and believe in yeah and why does that not fit with law enforcement mm-hmm. and they can't do it yeah yeah, and that's that's where you know with with us in law enforcement, uh, you know our our office we've got some great people, um, not some they're all fantastic people, and they're they're there for those like I said before the the right reasons. Yeah, and there's no day that they they go to work in that with that mindset that you know apparently got a lot of play that that's the way you know all cops are. We're, we're, yeah, we're just not like that. We don't go to yeah. work. Saying we're going to mess somebody up today, right? It's just now, could there be an officer in in Georgia or Ohio or Minneapolis that says that or is thinking that? Absolutely, right. But I really, truly believe that what we do behind the scenes that nobody notices with our office, the emails that get sent out, the messages, the discussions that happen between captains and sergeants and deputies and 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 clerical staff on how. You know, this is how we handle this situation, and and how we're going to do this better. Um, that's what that's what we do. Yeah. So that the the philosophy within our office is all that I can control. Number one, um, I can't tell Scott what he's going to do, yeah. and we talk. But ultimately, it's Scott's decision. Right. It happens in Dodge County. That's his yeah. deal. Yeah. Um, and he answers for it, um, as well as I answer what happens here. So it's a philosophy. It's a mindset. And that's where I feel really confident that our folks are going to do it the right way. And they know that if they, do, if they don't, if they make a mistake, whether it's accidental or intentional, there's going to be consequences there too. And that was a big part of the, the – uh, and we've heard that over and over, that cops get away with things and they cover for each other and you don't even know yeah. what we do behind the scenes. And it doesn't get reported because it's 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 uh, not public information. But we take care of our own in the sense of if you mess up, we take care of it. Yeah. And um, in, in other words, you hold them. We hold them accountable. Absolutely. For what their actions we, are. Yeah. We yeah, hold yeah. people accountable because we have to. Yeah. And if we don't, then that's a that's the wrong message. That's the wrong philosophy that we want to have in our office. It's not the way we want to do things. So um, we just have to keep plugging on and yeah. stay determined and make sure that we um, continue doing those right things. Most people don't see the kinds of trauma that you guys go through and gals go through. Uh, I, I don't say guys and just male, but guys and Yeah, gals. I know. I do the same yeah, thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm terrible I'm at that, that <laughs> political correctness yeah. stuff, but every, I think everybody knows what I mean. Yeah. Um, I drove up on my daughter's crash when they yeah. were still trying to get her out. Um, you know, I, I've seen uh, 10 years ago the crash on 30 and, and 63 by oh, yeah. the airport. I was You were there, there. too? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I showed up. I was the captain of patrol at the time, so I got there sure. a little late. I, I found Carter. Oh, my. I didn't yeah. know that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that was <clears throat> that was tough stuff. And yeah. so I've seen a, a very small piece of what you see often. Mm-hmm. And um, 
more people need to understand that it's there's a lot of trauma that you guys go through mm-hmm. gal and gals yeah and gals <laughs> <laughs> and i i think that um it's not an excuse to have a bad day but obviously it's a yeah. little bit easier to have a bad day then yeah. but what i what i want to say with that is understanding in a very very small way what that trauma looks like mm-hmm. um i think that anybody that has ever said to defund the police would say give you guys more money and yeah. gals yeah. <laughs> yeah because and it's not need, all about you, the money no but it's, what i'm saying is more than anything is that you would have um you'd you'd be able to have more training right you, you know hand-to-hand that's, stuff that's, I, I mean i think yeah. that's important you that's would it. It, more money would allow for more officers Right. Um, which means you have more break where you can go to the shooting range yes. and you can go be trained a little bit more exactly. in hand-to-hand combat because exactly. you don't get that. You can go to a counselor, even though as a guy, I see a counselor, yeah. right? You know, yeah. it's not super often anymore. I've been, but, I've been, but, I've you been know, there too. I, it's, you know, you have to. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that, and like I recommend to anybody, you have to know yourself to know what counselor that you have to see yeah. in, in things, but... I think that some of those kind of that that um, um, to build that mental resilience and, mm-hmm. and things, you need more money to do that. Mm-hmm. You need more staff to to balance right. some of that stuff out we, too. One of the one of the hearings we had was uh, uh, they flew in uh, with this working group that I talked mm. about. They it was in the it was a big day talking about mental health and 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 wellness for law enforcement was yeah. a big factor and then mental health and wellness for communities too. So, talking about that if a family and the family that gets in is, as they say, and I guess you it's right to say it, they're the victims of an officer involved shooting. So, mm-hmm. you know, even though a a individual who is killed by a police officer may have been doing. Uh, something illegal um, and not complying or whatever and and threatens or whatever the situation was and granted like I said way earlier in this there are situations where I would I look at those and go yeah no that's not cool so there are times when officers are messing up yeah there's no question about that so I'm not saying that that's not true yeah or that it doesn't happen it does but in a situation where an officer does act in a way that is within the law and and he or she has no options left and we can talk about options all day yeah, long right, people yeah, want to yeah, debate that no, all right yeah. you know even one of our presidential candidates gave yeah. law enforcement an option that i'm sorry but that's not going to happen yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, and, and it you, shouldn't you and know I, what i'm talking I, absolutely about. <laughs> i'm right there with you man <laughs> so we talked about in that session and part of that session was Law, and this is something we're going to work on in, in the state of Minnesota. We're going to do this. And I hope we can get the legislature to help fund it, mm-hmm. but don't take it away from us on our training side. It needs to be funded from, from somewhere else. And that is, we should be also, so we take the officer out of that situation and we, we give them some help and do what they, they need to because that's traumatic for them mm-hmm. if they've just killed or severely injured someone. But what are we doing to help and support that family? Yeah. They need some help and support. They're part of our community. Yeah. We need to help and support them too. So let's find a way to do that. And that didn't get put through the legislature this year. And I'm mm. like, why did you guys miss that part of it? Um, but we had a lot of talk about that. But then we had this, uh, I think it was a captain from Camden, New Jersey. Um, and it's a, a sheriff's office, Camden, Camden County. Um, police is what they call themselves. So okay. a number of years ago, look up the history, Canton, New Jersey was one of the worst cities in the state of, in the country. Uh, I think it was related to uh, murders. I think they were the murder capital and wow. some of that stuff. So city just outside of New York, the other side of the mm-hmm. river from New York, Camden, New Jersey. And uh, they got into, there was, I, and I don't, I haven't done enough of the research myself because I'm, I'm curious about this. I just haven't had time to do the yeah, research. So yeah. I'm, I'm kind of reminding myself I want <laughs> right. to do this again because <laughs> it's been a number of months that I've, I've, have, haven't thought about it. But this captain came and what happened was Camden, New Jersey Police Department got, got wiped off the map. 
and it became mm. Camden County. So they okay. they basically say it's Rochester Police Department, and there gets to be a lot of issues and corruption and whatever sure. within Rochester. They would abolish that, and it would be the Olmsted County Sheriff's Office, uh, and we would be Olmsted County whatever, and then yeah. we would police both the city of Rochester as well as what we already do for the rest of the county, mm. including the small cities. So that's what happened. They became Camden County Police. And out of that, they created some new pathways to help train officers that is really great. It's fantastic. But they can do that because they're a really large agency. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't hurt for them to take one or two officers who, who performed inappropriately or against policy or against the law. If it's against the law, you're going to be yeah, probably yeah. out the door, and I hope they are. But if it's against policy, they can take them off, off the street and they put them through immediate training it might be the ne that afternoon if something happened in the morning it might be that evening um, but within the next 24 hours they can pluck them away from that situation after they do all their reports and then they start reviewing their body cams their squad cams and they go this is where you messed up small agencies even ours we're not really small but that's a hard thing to do. Number one, we don't have all the technology that we could do all of those things, mm -hmm. um, nor do we have the training um, equipment, which they put them in this room, and it's uh, they can basically just replay the video. Okay. It, they've got created videos. It's shoot, don't shoot kind of scenario-based sure. stuff. And then it's interactive, so the officer can tell that person put the gun down or put your hands up, and they will. If it's in a compliance portion of the video, they'll put their hands up, put the gun down, and they comply. If they don't, then there's reactional stuff that has mm -hmm. to happen. Mm -hmm. So they can they can take them right out of that, and and now you have a scenario, and they can create that, create, and then yeah. they can retrain them right now, almost immediate. And yeah. this captain from Camden's, you know, you're talking and telling him like, wow, that's a great program, but. Who's going to pay for that? Those each one of those those systems is I want to say it was a hundred couple hundred thousand dollars. It was a big number, and you go to Dodge County, Sky Rose isn't going to have that money no. for that. Yeah, we don't have that money for that. Yeah, and Minneapolis, St. Paul, Ramsey, Hennepin State Patrol, the Big Five as we call them, mm -hmm. um, yeah, they might be able to, but is Cloquet? Going to yeah. drive down to the cities to do that training? Will they have time? Do they can they do that within that twenty four hours? No. Right. So that's that's a the real big challenge when they start talking about the defund thing. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. If we had more officers or deputies or troopers that we could have on the street, and so that we could take them out, even if we couldn't do that full system and that full training retraining thing that Camden, New Jersey is, is, is you know, talking about, even if we could pull them out and, and keep them away from their, their situation and, and, you know, their responsibilities and do our little bit of retraining. And I'm not talking just about They can at least personally decompress yeah. then. And, and, and we're not, not talking always about officer-involved of, shootings. Yeah, no, right, yeah. Any scenario. Yeah, yeah, just, absolutely. Just, you know, you, you talked little rough to that person or yep. you didn't handle this traffic stop maybe it's an officer safety thing where they messed up and you mm -hmm. know you know maybe they didn't get hurt and maybe something bad didn't happen but there's better ways to do those things and then the other part of it and you you mentioned it too is you know get down and wrestle around a little bit yeah and and use the use of force pieces yep. that we have available but we don't spend that time, and not everybody. I grew up as a wrestler at high school and college. Oh, sure. great. I was 500. You know, I did my best, and, you know, whatever. I got smacked around a few times. Yeah. Times that I didn't, that was, that was messed <laughs> up, but, you know, whatever. Um, but I have that in my background. Yeah. So when I go, not anymore, but when I did, and I had those times when I had to get into a, you know, there was a scenario where I had to handle it. And we didn't have tasers and stuff back when I started. Mm -hmm. I, I found myself, I, I knew how to control my body. I knew how right, to, yep. to use my body weight to do various things. We've got people that have never done anything like yeah. that that are coming into law enforcement. And we don't have enough time to really get them 
really competent in that area. I mean, they're going to take care of what they have to do. Um, but again, there's no agency, I think, in this state, maybe a few, the big five, that might have the, those opportunities to do that. <clears throat> the rest of us, no. We don't have that time. So when people are saying defund, they don't know what they're talking no, about. No, they don't. Because when I you agree. take that money away, when you reduce the size of officers, not only are we not responding to calls for service that the average citizen should expect their law enforcement to be there mm -hmm. for, they're also not going to be as competent because they're not going to have enough time to train because there's not enough time to take them off of their street patrol responsibilities answering those calls for service. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, the defund argument is so so misguided, and I don't I don't care. I could sit in a room with five hundred defunders, and I'd say the same thing. Yeah, there's so much. Again, stop yelling and screaming at me from yep. the street and and posting it on your social media. Let's sit at a table. Let's have a, a good discussion about what that really means, because you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Be careful what you wish for. The, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, and we've seen that in Minneapolis in our own state. I yeah. mean, there's police officers that won't even, I, I mean, literally they wait for the smoke to clear, Yeah. so to speak. Yeah, it, that's, I mean, that's they don't a bad go place in. to be. Yeah. That's a, and, and I can't blame them. No, you uh, can't blame them. Absolutely. You know, and, no, and, they're you know, getting you, shot. You get people they're getting saying, shot well, at. that's what we they're pay getting, you for. No, nobody no. paid me to go get shot. Yeah, I, I, no. never, I didn't sign up for that. No. Do I know that's a possibility? Yeah, I've, I've, yes. been, I've known that for 40 years. I get that. Yes. But that's not why I signed up. I signed no. up to help people. Yes. And every one of these people we interviewed today, why do you, why do you want to do this? That's one of our questions. Uh, we have, what do you know about Olmsted County? What do you know about our office? And they list the things and obviously tells us they've done some research. And then the next question, why, do you, why us? Why law enforcement? And that's where we get those answers. Yeah. They, they don't... They're not going out there to rough people up. Yeah. That's not it. They want to go help their community, give back to their community. I heard that several times today that they want to give back because, you know, they'll talk about their growing up times and maybe a relative or a, a family member, personal family member, um, you know, was involved in something. And they saw that and they saw how one of them was talking about how uh, a family member had committed suicide. And that, that, now potential deputy was saying how those officers came in and handled that situation it was a bad situation but how they handled it and how they took care of me yeah was so powerful i it was right then and there this this you know candidate said i knew what i wanted to do that was so powerful yeah. and to come from a horrible situation like that to say I want to help people because mm -hmm. that is what I want to do. That's who we are. Yeah. And, you know, granted, there's there's others that'll say, oh, you know, cops, they, they do this and that, and, you know, they didn't treat me right here or there. Okay, not going to deny that. I'm sure it happens. But we're not going to allow it. We're not going to, we shouldn't tolerate it. Um, and on the other end, uh, you know, we talked, I was talking a little bit about the wellness stuff. Now, we do a lot of things that most agencies in the state of Minnesota and the country don't do. Mm -hmm. we, you talked about uh, seeing a, you know, going to a counselor. We do that monthly. Yeah. We have that available for our deputies. And, and in the most recent months, since all this other stuff has been going on, uh, they'll come down for a day and, and they, the, our deputies sign up. We don't know who it is, so there's. I don't. I've. I've no idea who's going unless right. they tell me. Yeah. And yeah. I've had our deputies come and go. Man, thank you for letting us do this. So yeah. we're we are spending money from the county, from the taxpayers, to help support our deputies, so that when they have handled those bad calls, mm -hmm. the, the Highway 30 Deej's uh, uh, crash, and and those deputies are there we're giving them the support that they need so that they don't become that disgruntled and hateful and, and that deputy that that handles people inappropriately. We want them to be able to deal with those things so it doesn't come out on a, in the bad way. Yeah. And we're doing that stuff. Yeah. Are we going to do more? We'd love to do more. We want to do more. But again, it comes down to the time and how much time we have in training. And it drives our training guys nuts because you know, I spent five <laughs> years in training as a training sergeant and all those years with school liaison and, 
you know, I was just always kind of involved, and I was an instructor for a number of years with our agency. And I'll I'll see things, and I'll come up, hey guys, we need to do. That. I'll send an email. We need to put this in our next training, and they'll send it back, <laughs> sheriff. <laughs> we don't have, we have any a more waiting time. list already because <laughs> they're getting the same things from our other people yeah. too, and they're saying, oh, we need to spend more time on this. We need to spend. And they're like, ugh. And then we have the mandatory things that the state requires us to do to maintain our license, mm -hmm. which is great. And that's another point. Because I'm expecting this thing to go worldwide. Because that's, that's uh, how, there you go. How great Let's this do is. it. Yeah, Minnesota is the only state in the country that requires a college education to be a cop. Really? Yes, it is. I did not know. And that. that's it's been that way. I was in the very first class. I graduated from college, and I was in the very first class then that was required in Minnesota, which is not like other states. Two year degree then, or two year four? degree? Okay. Um, and then I did more education yeah, afterwards. Yeah, right. But um, you know, I was anxious. I got in, and two years, I was in the very first class that Minnesota acquired by the post board, and I'm the only one still working. <laughs> <That's>, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> but anyway, that was not my goal at the time. I just wanted yeah. to be a cop, and yeah. you know, I just wow. wanted to go out and help people and stuff. And uh, now I forgot where I was going with this. But anyway, well, the only state with the education is what yeah. you kind of yeah, and, and it, uh, again, it goes education. back to that blanket piece yeah. again. Mm -hmm. So. I was looking, there's a, a, a website called Officer Down Memorial Page. Yeah. And uh, there's another officer who uh, uh, died today. He was shot in a traffic stop, I think, down in Georgia or something oh, several wow. days ago. And he, he, he died today from his injuries. And, you know. Did Scott tell you what he's working on? Yes. Yeah. He, we, I he, listened to he, his. Yeah, he talked to me, too. And yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, he's very he's, powerful. He's got something there. Yeah. Did you? He listened to I the did. first one? Yeah. yeah really yeah, powerful. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, all Side you out bar, there. right, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you got to wait. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, those other states, you know, so for Minnesota officers, and granted, we have the, the Floyd death, mm -hmm. bad situation. Yeah. The courts are going to decide, juries are going to decide what was right and what was wrong with that. And there's, there's challenges on both sides. And, you know, I don't know where it's going to go. I, I really don't have an idea how it's going to play out, but... Again, it's one of those deals where people who are, who hate cops are not going to be happy, most likely, yeah. and people that are in favor of cops are probably not going to be happy too because I just don't know where it's going to go. But yeah. um, it's the, so politically loaded right now. Right I mean, now, it's a, it it's is. a powder keg it of is. yeah, uh, and that's where uh, literally worldwide. I mean, yeah, when you look and at so it, so I'm way. I'm so yeah. disappointed because for many years, and I was on our state honor guard, and we trained. Cops. So we not only do we train, train law enforcement officers and agencies in our state to be honor guards to handle law mm -hmm. enforcement funerals and stuff like that. And I did that for 27, well, 24 years. I've uh, been with that organization now 27. And and we had, not so we, we trained our own officers here in Minnesota, but we also trained officers that came from around the country, including mm. federal officers, to train in honor guards and dealing with law enforcement officers, families, and agencies after the death of an officer, whether it was a uh, felonious, you know, a killing, mm -hmm. um, or uh, an accidental a car crash or something where the officer, you know, uh, rolled their car and died, or you know, heart attacks, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, officer line of duty deaths, things like that, and. Uh, you know, I had I've had so many cool opportunities to mix and talk and spend some time with officers around the country, and we we tell them how we do things in Minnesota. And you know, I was always up until May twenty fifth extremely proud, yeah. And I still am, but now there's a, a a really bad mark on us. And granted, there's some other situations that have happened in the state, some recently, some years ago, where. Officers may have acted a slightly inappropriately or inappropriately, and you know that's a reflection on all of us. Mm -hmm. But I've always been really proud of being able to say that I think Minnesota is doing it right in a lot of ways. We're doing it right, um, going from where we used to be bef when I was in college, and then they changed all the rules before I got out. <laughs> <laughs> like what the heck? Why, right. why me? Yeah. Um, but it worked out perfectly. Where prior to that. If you um, knew somebody in your local agency, let's say, so I grew up in Sturtville, and I knew uh, uh, somebody who worked with Olmsted County Sheriff's Office, and I said, hey, I want to be a cop, and you'd probably fill out an application. Maybe you took a test, probably didn't, 
And then they said, okay, yeah, we'll hire you because, you know, you look like a good kid. Sure. Wow. And then they would send you to a class after they hired after you they hired. up in St. Paul. And it was just a few weeks. Yeah. And it was basically, you know, learning some statutes, really not a whole lot of other stuff. Uh, and then you'd come back and then your agency would do a little bit of training. But basically within the first week, you were you were out in the road and, and going. Hmm. And granted, we don't have the t- the technology we have now is – yeah. Pfft, Right. Nobody even yeah, dreamed yeah. of it exactly. back then. Yeah, and even when I was coming out, but there, know, I think there was more personal there. responsibility and personal integrity too. Yeah. That I, oh yeah, I would say, uh, just when I, you know, my generation growing yeah. up and things like that yeah. has more than what I feel there oh, yeah. is today. Absolutely, we've grown so much, and so you know, I've always been extremely proud. And then you know, this incident and and the 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 struggles that have gone on around the world now. In relationship to, you know, what happened on May twenty fifth, you know, it it it's it it really has in some ways set us back because now we've we've lost a lot of trust. Some rightful, some not rightful. Most of it not rightful, yeah. in my opinion, because we are doing so many things that are right in trying to take care of our officers, trying to take care of our communities, and and do what we should be doing as peace officers yes not police officers right. and that was one of the things we talked about in the working group was in all of our language we wanted the languages to say peace officers because we are the state memorial up in St. Paul it's a memorial for for uh, for peace officers mm-hmm. that have fallen in the line of duty it's not police yeah it's peace officers because that's really what we are yeah and that's what we should be and so I use that to talk about too with our people, and you know that that's what we are. We're peace officers. Yeah, we're law enforcement because we're enforcing the laws yeah. that are on the land. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, we're sent into places to bring peace to a chaotic situation, whatever mm-hmm. it may be. And we do that every single day. Yeah, you do. It does make yeah. the headlines. Yeah, because which we're doing is too it right. bad. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> which is too bad. That's a good way to wrap up. I don't All know right. if you realize we, how long no we've been idea. talking. But <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, you see what time it is? Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, it's good. My wife hasn't been buzzing well, I, me, wondering, I, where are you? Right, right. Yeah, she must know I like to talk. <laughs> yeah, she, she knows where I was going. I was talking to her on the way out here, so no good. big deal. That's, that's Dude, all thanks good. for being here. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Matt. Uh, we'll have to do this again do. soon. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for what you do. I really appreciate thank you. it. Hey, and thanks for being shiny. Yeah. Thank you for being strong. Thank you for being hope. Thank you for being influential. Thank you for being necessary. And thank you for being you. Yeah, thanks. I like that. Yeah, you got it. (laughs) 